Why don't we take a look at uh, this video that was put up the other day by the Young Turks. For those who don't know, the Young Turks, it's this online news organization, as you can see, with over 5 million subscribers. And uh, they put up a segment about a protest spread in Iran after a 22-year-old woman dies in custody of morality police. Let's see what the Young Turks have to say about what's going on in Iran. In scenes unprecedented in the Islamic Republic, a woman cuts her hair as the crowd cheers her on, chanting death to the dictator. Rare images are trickling out from across Iran, where thousands have taken to the streets in daring acts of defiance never seen before. And again, you, you got to give it up to these protesters in Iran. It takes massive balls and courage, massive balls. I've got balls of steel. To stand up to a theocratic regime like one that uh, has been ruling over Iran for roughly 40 years at this point. They are a pretty repressive dictatorship trying to impose uh, Islamamiya, not only on their own citizens, but they've been seeking to export this uh, goofy-ass revolution ever since the Islamic Revolution in Iran. And uh, you have a lot of protests, people standing up to this uh, madness. So give it up to the protesters in Iran. They've got, a, they've got some balls of steel. I've got balls of steel. On this scale... Widespread protests are currently taking place in Iran following the death of a 22-year-old woman who was taken into custody by the so-called morality police for wearing her hijab incorrectly. That is what women are dealing with in Iran. That is what conservative men here in the United States are hoping for in our future. Uh-oh. Okay, so I know some people on the right might think that uh, Anna Kasparian here is being a little hyperbolic. When she says that uh, this is what a lot of uh, conservative men here in America might want. However, um, as I, I just put up a video earlier today about how uh, conservatives are uh, embracing this term Christian nationalism. Uh oh, spaghetti It's funny. Uh, last year, last September, about a year ago, I put up a video titled Conservatives Are Laying the Ground for Theocracy. And you remember at the time Ben Shapiro was getting all bent out of shape over um, people calling anti-abortionists the American Taliban. Meanwhile, his cohorts over at the Daily Wire, like Matt Walsh, he, uh, he calls himself a theocratic fascist. And another one of his cohorts, Michael Knowles, is now uh, promoting a brand of Christian nationalism. In fact, Knowles took it a, a step further the other day, saying uh, a difficult pill for conservatives to swallow. The transgender mania is a product of capitalism and individualism, at least, at least as much as it is of leftism and cultural Marxism. Blow it out your ass. So, uh, yeah, I guess this is, the, this is the state of conservatives in America. I guess these are the guys that are going to save America, save American freedom from uh, the left, from the communists and socialists and nihilists and environmentalists on the left. These are the people who are going to save capitalism, apparently. Are, are the uh, Christian nationalists, the theocratic fascists, Anyway, some of you guys might be thinking Anna Kasparian is being a little hyperbolic when she says stuff like this. But I'm at a point where it's uh, where I'm thinking, I'm not going to kill you, but I don't have to save you. Now, here's more on the story from CNN. They're risking being jailed or even flogged for defying the country's strict Islamic dress code. But that has not stopped them, with many removing and burning their headscarves. Good for these protesters. The protests were sparked by the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini while in the custody of the morality police. The authorities say she died of a heart attack, which her parents do not believe. The authorities say... Yeah, died of a heart attack. Yeah, and it's unfortunate that it took something like this to spark the protests and outrage. But uh, again, you got to give it up to the people of Iran who are uh, standing up. 
experts say an autopsy is being reviewed. But the protests have snowballed into much more than that, with women chanting for life and freedom. Freedoms that were taken away from them by the 1979 Islamic Revolution. Now, the recipe for unrest in Iran has been there, right? All the ingredients for that unrest have, have been there. And I think that this is about more than what happened to this 22-year-old woman. What happened to her, to be sure, it was tragic. But it's when you see unrest like this, often the story that's being reported might be what triggered the mm -hmm. unrest. But there's a lot going on behind the scenes, and I do want to discuss that in just a moment. Before we do, a few more details about her. Uh, I, I want to note that there's definitely a lot of lying going on. Uh, I do think, I'm obviously speculating that there was some foul play here. The idea of a 22-year-old woman suffering from a heart attack is ridiculous to me, especially a woman who appeared to be healthy, with no issues. Official sources now say a total of seven people have been killed since protests erupted on Saturday over the death of Amini, the 22-year-old from Iran, uh, Iranian Kurdistan, who died last week after being arrested in Tehran for unsuitable attire. However, reports from Kurdish rights groups um, say that uh, the death toll is actually far larger. It said that three protesters were killed on Tuesday by security forces in or near Kurdish areas where the unrest has been particularly intense and deadly. And just to give you some details on what Amini's family is saying, father's not buying that she suffered from a heart attack and that there was no foul play. Amini fell into a coma and died while waiting with other women held by the morality police who enforce strict rules in the Islamic Republic requiring women- Imagine having a morality police. Women to cover their hair and wear loose fitting clothes in public. Her and not to go back to my video uh, from last year, but this was an issue I talked about was when uh, Mr. Theocratic Fascist Matt Walsh of the Daily Wire put out a video saying that, uh, yeah, we should absolutely legislate morality. Blow it out your ass. Her father said she had no health problems and that she suffered bruises to her legs in custody and holds the police responsible for her death. The police have denied harming her. The international community has called for a third independent party to investigate the matter. It's a mess. And let's... I think it's and keep in mind, the Islamic uh, Revolution, the clerics in Iran rose to power in response to um, repression and uh, the dictatorship uh, of the Shah, Paul, Paul Havi. Much like uh, a lot of conservatives today, they'll talk about how the left, the left is taking over and they want to take away your rights. They want to take away your free speech. They want to impose socialism and, you know, and, and police morality and whatnot. And they want you to, uh, some of them want you to go along with their Christian nationalist garbage. In which case, uh, it's just two gangs fighting over power. It's not, they're not, neither side really seems to be trying to offer an alternative to dictatorship and authoritarianism worth discussing the U.S.'s role in the mess. It, it is important. The clerics in Iran essentially said, um, yeah, uh, yeah, the Shah is bad. He's guilty of a lot of crimes and repression. Give us more power so that we can impose our will on, uh, on Iran. But what's, uh, or what, what does, uh, Anna Kasparian blame this madness on? Investigate the matter. It's a mess. And it's a mess. Let's I think it's worth discussing the U.S.'s role in the mess. Oh, I guess the U.S. had a role in this mess, in this 22-year-old woman getting murdered by the morality police. How did that happen? How is the United States responsible for the mess in Iran? Keep in mind, the United States has not really been involved in Iran in four decades since the late 1970s. It is important to talk about that because the religious leaders in that country would not exist had it not been for the United States orchestrating a coup in that country. Oh, see, again, it's America's fault. It's always America's fault. Oh, uh, you absolutely suck. Can't talk about uh, the brutal regime in Iran and these religious leaders who've been in charge for 40 years. 
their leadership, the regime in Iran uh, is older than many people are today. But I guess it's our fault, right, Anna Kasparian? It's, it's, it's America's fault uh, that these religious leaders took over the country, mind you, with help uh, from other leftists and Marxists and socialists in Iran during the revolution who were more than eager to play grab ass with Ayatollah Khomeini to, uh, to, to, get, to get rid of the Shah and acquire power. Oops. Yeah, they, I guess they have no responsibility. The people who supported the revolutionaries and voted for a uh, an Islamic Republic in favor of the Shah, they have no response. No, it's all America's fault, apparently. Because, uh, again, of uh, Operation Ajax. This is a big reason why I made a video about this. Put it up uh, in August last month. 35-minute video where I really bring in the receipts. I cite, I think, uh, seven books in this video. Not to toot my own horn, but I debunked this whole narrative that uh, Mohammed Mossadegh, this notion that he like won a U.S.-style presidential election when really he was chosen to fill a vacant prime ministership because the previous guy was assassinated, Ali Rizmara. He was assassinated for being too friendly with the British. So they assassinated him. And then Mohammed Mosaddegh was chosen by the Shah and Parliament, Parliament to uh, fill the prime ministership, which ended up being a disaster. You know, it's funny. Because Mohammed Mosaddegh was a nationalist, and was uh, an explicit, he had an explicit, loud disdain for what he considered foreign influence in Iran. And he often did stuff like he suspended elections. Toward the end of his power, he dismissed the parliament. Imagine if some, something like that happened in the United States. A nationalist president comes into power, starts suspending elections, and uh, dismissing Congress in the name of emergency powers and nationalizing entire industries and uh, talking about how we need to kick out foreign influences and often, uh, you know, took to the media to uh, rile up his supporters to take to the streets. I imagine if something like that happened today, people like Anna Kasparian and everyone else on the left who likes to invoke Ma Operation Ajax and Ma Mohammed Mossadegh, if something like that happened in America today, they would be rightfully, rightfully outraged. They would be freaking out. But maybe Anna Kasparian doesn't know, or maybe she just hates America and capitalism more than she hates nationalist dictators like uh, what Mohammed Mossadegh eventually became. Tree. So we're definitely partly responsible. Yeah, again, we are definitely partly responsible. America, this is all America's fault, you guys. We're also responsible in implementing crippling economic sanctions. Oh, no, we, 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 we uh, imposed crippling economic sanctions. Doesn't this kind of undermine her entire point, though? If she acknowledges that these religious leaders are repressive, if they are uh, creating this uh, madness by uh, killing uh, dissidents, wouldn't, uh, you know, opening up trade with them, lifting trade, forget the fact that they're, an expli they're explicitly hostile to the United States, wouldn't lifting trade uh, just help enrich and empower the current regime that currently uh, rules over Iran? And I guess uh, Anna Kasparian thinks this would be a wonderful idea. But yeah, I guess that's the solution. That's the conclusion uh, people like Anna Kasparian come to. Yeah, what's going on in Iran is America's fault. And uh, the solution is to uh, lift economic sanctions so that we can empower the regime that's ultimately responsible for this madness.